Hello everyone, Chad Franzen here, and welcome to the Kingdom Finance Show. Today we are going to reveal what you really need to know about the economy, the stock market, and real estate. And we're going to give you action steps to take right now to become a Kingdom Impact Investor. It's time to bring clarity out of chaos. Let's get started. Hello everyone, Chad Franzen, and welcome to the Kingdom Finance Show. I'm really glad you're here. Thanks for tuning in. Um, hey, if you watched the episode last week, we talked about awakening and, and empowering uh, Christians in business and in investing. So if you haven't already listened to that, check that out. That's uh, really part one today. We're going to continue this, this concept uh, I wrote about in a, a white paper uh, for a group I'm a part of about how do we awaken and empower our, our minds and our spirits as Christians in the business marketplace and with our personal finances. So I'm really glad you're here. Let's jump in. And I'm going to start by recapping a little bit of, of last week's episode, and we're going to dive right in into some applications for what we can do uh, as uh, individuals, families, communities, employees, business owners to truly become kingdom investors. So, hey, if you want to connect with us, uh, please like and subscribe to the show. And then you can also find us wealthbuilders.net. All right. So uh, last week we talked about, in the previous episode, this concept. I had shared some research from Christianity Today uh, that came out in August of 2022 where it talked about uh, some $30 trillion, not billion, trillion dollars uh, in assets in the United States are controlled by Christians, either individually, organization, corporate level, uh, in the stock and bond capital markets. Now, this does not include business enterprise value or, or real estate. But the study found that of that $30 trillion that was managed by Bible-believing Christians um, and Christian-controlled organizations, that approximately only 8%, that's right, folks, 8% of that $30 trillion was managed in a faith-driven manner or what I like to call a kingdom framework. So we talk a lot about some of the woke, liberal agenda-focused banks and investment institutions like BlackRock or J.P. Morgan and, and, and you know Bank of America. But let's look inwardly at the ecclesia, at the church globally, uh, and what are we doing with what God has put right in front of us? What has God given us in the way of resources to steward? Now, in this, in this context, I'm speaking specifically about financial assets. Certainly, there's all types of resources that God gives us, which we talk about in, in other um, shows. But, but this is really, I'm, I'm speaking um, at a financial asset level either businesses that we own, specifically this study, investments in the stock and bond markets. Um, so we can do better, right? And, and really last week's show and this week's show is really just a, a clarion call for, for, for all of us, myself included, for, for our company at Wealth Builders Investments and, and those in our industry to, um, you know, really to answer the, answer the call uh, because it's time we really believe we're entering the third great awakening, and uh, that's going to include, you know, mass um, salvations and stadium revivals and, and healings and signs and wonders. But we also believe that, um, you know, Jesus did mi most of his miracles outside of the synagogue. He did them out in the marketplace, uh, out in the streets where where he went. And that's the same way for, for you and I. We are in the marketplace. Not all of us are pastors and, and ministers uh, as a full-time profession, but yet we are all uh, sons and daughters who are called by God to walk in the Spirit and show people the kingdom. So very much, uh, I, I feel a strong passion, and I think you do too if you're listening to this, uh, if you followed us for any amount of time. Of um, we, we really need to ha really have a sober reality check for 
um, what's God put in front of us as far as our gifts, talents, and abilities, and specifically resources to manage, uh, financial assets, real estate, businesses, and are we doing it with a kingdom framework, with a faith-driven value system? And so we need to increase that number. Uh, it should not be 8% on that. So in summary, in last week's show, please listen to that, uh, Awaken and Empower Part 1. But uh, just summarize here quickly, and then I've got a lot of material to dive into. Um, we, we talked about the, the r- contributing factors to this concept is that the world system is not going to teach us how to do it, right? It's a Babylonian system. We talked about corporate America, Wall Street, and, and academia in general. Uh, and so the advice we're going to get is going to be very generic, homogenized, and it's not really going to be for freedom and impact. The second point we talked about was this concept of sacred versus secular divide, where it's very much like a separation of church and state, even when we think about voting and when we think about running businesses and investing our retirement accounts, brokerage accounts, and so forth on that. And then the third factor that I alluded to, and again, I wrote this in a white paper uh, that I did for an organization, was this just this pulse of busyness, uh, particularly in Western culture and in the U.S., this spirit of busyness. Uh, I called it this secular humanism. It's um, a mentor friend of mine would call this, we make decisions consciously or subconsciously out of the three C's, and the three C's being comfort, convenience, and control. And so those are really the three um obstacles, they, they are the things that most hinder us from really getting clarity on stewarding at a higher level um, for that. So uh, we would call these constraints um, very much in line with, with the topic of constraint theory, but we need to blast through these constraints, and some of it is just getting a revelation from the Lord um, on that. So today, uh, that was all prologue, so I went fast there, but I wanted to give a little bit of summary from the last show where we really set the table on this topic. And again, I've entitled this Awaken and Empower Christians in Business and Investing. And let's talk about applications. Um, you know, I hate it when when people will, will present a problem or, or, or research will find problems but not give us um, solutions to consider. So I really want you to take this to the Lord, talk about this with your friends and family, uh, co-workers, because I think as we come around the table together to be kingdom investors, I do believe we can make a meaningful difference. So we're going to dive in. So really three drivers or applications for, well, how do we change this? How do we really integrate our, our spiritual values spiritual formation into business and investing. And the first one is we need a, what I'm going to call a filter to work from or a filter framework. And uh, again, this is, this is going to be true whether you're investing in assets or if you're an entrepreneur and small business owner, right? So just, you know, you can, these are interchangeable with those roles and, and hats. So as I explain these, uh, understand that there's there's multiple applications um, for this. So the first one is we need a we need a filter. We need a system of filters. Uh, it's really it's a three prong filter which I'm going to go over on uh, how do we take the traditional advice from Wall Street, corporate America, really good training programs and then how do we apply kingdom principles to them? so that the Holy Spirit can give us revelation on, oh, okay, I, I understand that concept as it's taught in the world, and now let me apply it through the lens of Jesus, and uh, voila, you're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. You're going to see greater profitability and impact. Um, you know, if you're a business owner, this translates into what companies you're going to trade goods and services with. If it's your, If you're an employee... Uh, what type of companies will you work for? What type of companies will you give your time, your most precious commodity to, your energy, your talents? As consumers, these filters apply to where will my family and I spend our money? And then as an investor, this filter 
is the decision-making grid for where and how to invest my money. So filter framework, uh, this is driver number one of what we can do to really change culture in the business marketplace and investing. So three-pronged filter here. The first level of the filter is called biblically responsible. And the way I just way I describe this one is it's a negative screen. So you're just you're saying no to things um, that are in direct opposition to the teachings of the Bible, uh, the teachings of Jesus, and really what as a Bible believing, God fearing uh, Christian disciple of Christ should do. Uh, And so when we do a negative screen, we're not condemning or judging other people uh, that have other persuasions that they've made decisions about, but uh, we love all people, but we don't agree with all people or groups. So uh, we are accountable to the Lord Jesus for the decisions we make. So the negative screen is just saying, well, if there are companies that actively endorse and profit from things that are completely opposite of what the Bible says, then we need to filter them out and just say no, right? So again, different ways to apply this. And so from our standpoint, we are very much pro-life, and we want to avoid companies who are active supporters of of abortion and abortion uh, benefits, um, companies that are, uh, what's the right word? helping indirectly or, or turning a blind eye to human trafficking, uh, certainly global companies and, and how they work with employees in um, third world countries, poor countries, um, media censorship, uh, violations of First and Second Amendment rights. Uh, so sanctity of life, uh, biblical definition of marriage, uh, gender confusion, you know, all those topics where... Um, we don't judge other people, but but we are responsible for the decisions we're going to make on where our money goes. And so that's just a negative filter. Um, it's really the baseline. It's not, it, it just gets us to the point where the next two filters, we can do more um, on that. So uh, as a mentor of mine once said, your, the more things you say no to, it will make your yes more powerful. So let me say that again. The more things you can say no to, it makes your yes more powerful. You know, it reminds me of a book my my daughter has, and I forget the title, but uh, in the book, the the little girl uh, is doing all these things and learning all these things about the world. It talks about how um, there are parties all over the world. You know, in every country, there, there's there's different parties that you can go to, but um, but you can't go to all the parties. And, you know, thank God you can't go to all the parties because you would be exhausted. And um, just reminded of that as I'm sharing about this, uh, some things we have to say no to. And I think we all recognize that, uh, whether you're a student, whether you're a parent with children, uh, grandparents, um, you you recognize that. But know that um, God wants our yes to be powerful. And so this first screen is really important. So yeah, filter, the first filter within this is biblically responsible. Again, just a negative screen. Um, you know, the, the adage of um, above all else, just do no harm is really the theme here. Well, let me move on to the second part of the filter, and it's what I call the pro-values filter. Uh, unlike the, the first one that's a negative screen, this is a positive screen. So we've now said no to some things, and now we have capacity, resources to say yes to other things that are in alignment with our value system that are not directly attacking Christianity. And and let's be clear, that is happening. There is persecution going on. There are anti-Christian attacks all over. Um, You know, they're different from country to country, but that does happen here in the U.S. And, And so, A pro-values approach is, you know, looking for companies that are in support of First and Second Amendment rights, that um, are in um, support of uh, pro-life, and that 
are, are really focused on applying spiritual values to their businesses. Um, I've done some other teachings on this, but uh, a friend of mine has done some studies on uh, the Russell 3000, the 3000 uh, largest U.S. companies that are publicly traded and how they're run, what type of CEOs uh, men and women run them. And um, wouldn't you know that a uh, academic research study proves that, um, and I saw the numbers, that um, there's a remnant in the, in the uh, public marketplace, public corporations of um, God-fearing, Jesus-loving, Bible-reading executives and CEOs that are running public companies, and it's a remnant. And we really need to lift those men and women up because they are really in the marketplace. They're, um, they're, they're at the top of the mountain. They're at, uh, as my friend Lance Wall now would say, they're at the gates. They're at the gates of influence of business, of finance, of, of medicine, of technology. And so this study, um, again, we're talking about investing <clears throat> pro values. What are you going to say yes to? So I would much rather take my money out of BlackRock or out of Google or out of Disney that I'm investing in and go invested in companies that are, I'm going to use the phrase, spiritually integrated. They're using a value system that, although they may not, they may not specifically say uh, that this is from the Bible, some do, uh, but they're running their companies with biblical principles. And this um, research my friend did uh, showed that these spiritually integrated corporations, which in the Russell 3000 is there's only about 4 to 5% of them, um, that they were more profitable. They had a higher rate of um, earnings growth, of profitability over a 10-year uh, study, and they also had higher rates of employee retention. Um, so, they, you know, they were doing things like corporate chaplaincy. Um, they were uh, providing counselors. Uh, and they were doing Bible studies at their uh, work site, uh, praying. Um, so very much just a heart for, for the business and, and a servant, what I call servant leadership. So again, pro values. Uh, and here, this is an alignment for you as a business owner of what vendors you work with right? What suppliers you use uh, as an employee, what companies you interview and work for. Um, as an investor, what type of companies you're going to put your money into to invest. Now remember, investing is a form of ownership, so God takes that seriously. And then lastly, consumers. Uh, you know, you can be a teenager and, and you get to make a choice of where you spend your money. And are you supporting those companies? So again, the second part of the filter, pro values, I call it the positive screen. Um, and let me jump into the third. The third filter is, we call it social impact. And in our context, let me re rephrase it as kingdom social impact. Uh, there's a whole liberal movement called ESG, uh, which is very much just an agenda um, of the, the liberal movement and... Um, powers that be. But social impact for a Christian is looking at things differently on that. So we're really, uh, this is the third level, and um, you don't have to be uh, a multimillionaire to operate at this level. You don't have to be retired or a certain age. It is attainable to do this. And really at this level, this filter, um, you're looking for financial return, but you're also looking for non-financial returns. So your metrics change a little bit. It's not just, hey, Chad, what's the rate of return on this? It's how does this money or these resources that I'm managing and allocating, how are they advancing the Great Commission of Matthew 28, 18? So we have to remember that money is attracted. It's not pursued. And that's never more true then at this level of, of true social impact um, on that. So um, in our business, we call it ROI, return on investment. But I mean, here uh, we're looking through a different lens of not only a financial return, but uh, how many jobs were created? How many people uh, were brought out of poverty? 
um, what what type of health care improvements were, were made, clean water, how many Bibles were distributed, how many souls were one to the Lord, how many healings took place, um, how many ministries were started or churches planted. Right, so again, this, this is the fun part, um, and so I really encourage everybody to, to pray about, um, talk about with your family what part of our financial plan is, is centered on kingdom impact. So this is not charitable giving, let me be clear. Um, charitable giving and tithing and offering you should be doing. Uh, we all need to be doing that. This is different. This is actually investing money that returns to you, but that it has an impact as it goes out and come back, comes back. Um, charitable giving is just a one way you, you give the money to your to your church or parachurch organization um, um, or an orphanage you support, and that's wonderful, and we must do that. Th- this is uh, think of it as a boomerang. This this money is going to go and have an effect and come back, and then you're going to keep doing it. So it, it, it's truly the parable of the talents, the, 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 the person with the five talents. This is that level where it is, it's continuing. So a lot of fun things happen here. And, um, you know, many individuals, if you're, you know, second half of life and you've had some success and some uh, resources accumulated, this is an area I really want to challenge you and encourage you to lean into. Um, now everyone can do it, but certainly some of you that are, that are, that are in the second half, um, it's time, it's time to really lean into, um, how can I invest these resources for advancing the kingdom? And, uh, there's some exciting things, um, and, uh, that you can see the fruit of it now. Um, so retirement, selling your business, um, you know, some of you listening to this, you know, need to hear that, that, uh, that there's more God wants to do. Um, you know, some of you are, you know, back half of life, you're in your sixties, seventies. Um, there's still a lot of things the Lord wants to do with you and through you with your resources and with your influence. And this is the third part of the filter kingdom impact. So I hope that is helpful. Again, we love talking about that at wealth builders investments. It's, um, you know, pretty neat to educate people through, again, negative screening, positive screening, and then let's call it impact screening, right? Okay, so that that's really driver number one for how do we apply principles in business and in personal finance that are going to create uh, kingdom impact ripples across the world. So drive, driver number two, I'm going to transition here a little bit, is uh, what I'm going to call uh, in my white paper, um, I called it uh, ecclesial communities and educational empowerment. I, I almost got every word with an E. I don't know how that happened, but um, so let me break that down. Really, in my research and talking to people, um, there are pods of communities, and so we know the church is ecclesia, and, and I think everyone would agree that the church extends beyond the four walls of of, of where we may worship corporately on a Sunday. Um, so community, right? Ecclesia. Um, there are these pods developing, and some of them are more organic, and some of them are more structured of, of groups of people, affinity groups, um, who really, they want to learn from each other. They want to educate and mentor others on kingdom principles in business and in investing. So I really paired this point number two with uh, communities uh, being formed, uh, relational communities, and then educational empowerment. So there are organizations popping up um, where mentors, spiritual uh, fathers and mothers, teachers are are really getting the word out, educating people um, on how to do this very thing of using your resources in business and investing for the glory of God and not for um, the liberal agenda and not, not for, you know, the ploys of the enemy. Uh, so we talk a, a little bit more about this. I'm going to just cover some of the highlights that I had written on. Um, but, you know, educational empowerment is, is, is huge because, you know, there's been several studies that talk about just lack of financial education, 
um, lack of financial awareness of how simple money management principles work. And, um, you know, that that's huge um, here. And, and so, you know, you know, practically we need to find mentors and coaches. We need to perf- we need to find professionals um, in tax and legal and business and real estate and investments that can coach us, uh, even if we have to pay for that. Uh, and in fact, some of them are better to pay for because you got to be careful about getting too much free advice. Uh, now, these people may be within your in your family. A lot of them are probably going to be outside of your immediate network that you're going to have to go out and seek. So one of the things we found was that individuals who had their own had created a like a personal advisory board. A lot of times we think of that for churches or, or, or corporations, but as in, individuals that created their own little advisory board, whether they called it that or not, um, they just had a few people, not a lot, that they had on speed dial. And, and if they needed to run a question by them um, about kingdom principles for business and investing um, for uh, marriage, for parenting, right? They just, they could immediately reach out to that person, right? That's your, that's your 2 a.m. friend um, or, or someone that you can connect with and, and they will um, really give you that wisdom, be a sounding board um, for that. So the educational piece, again, this uh, point number two is really the need for relational communities that are kingdom focused and uh, educational empowerment. Uh, and particularly tracks of education, uh, there, there's not uh, truly the right type of curriculum in academia, and that's not going to change. But there are, and I want to encourage folks, there are what I'm going to call alternative education programs and mentorships being planted in seed form. And, and some of that is happening um, through uh, Christian primary schools, undergraduate and graduate programs, Bible colleges, and even in some churches themselves. Some of these are, are organic. Some of them are more structured. But um, an educational curriculum. So some of you listening are really called to teaching, and uh, this is something um, that we need more teachers. We need more teachers um, that will take financial economic topics uh, investing topics, not just how to get out of debt, um, not just how to um, determine how much life insurance you need, but but true, truly taking a higher level approach, like to get to that next level of um, how do we build wealth for making an impact beyond just our generation. And so um, there are uh, there needs to be more um, educational curriculum developed. Um, you know, these can be as simple as e-courses. Um, I think the primary thing was some of the financial movement out there right now is it is, it, it's very promotional, uh, self, uh, there's a lot of self promoters, um, in there. And, um, I don't have a problem with, with one promoting themselves, but it, we really need to focus on what the word of God says for financial stewardship and, and not just, um, hey, you know, come buy my product for $997 or whatever. Um, th- obviously, there's a there's a place for that, but I think just the priority of we really got to make it about what Jesus said of how to steward businesses and not just selling a product um, on that. So, uh, again, that that's coming. And so some of you are hearing that and, and you're involved in some of these relational communities and involved in some of these educational uh, movements, and we need more of that. And and the more we get that centered around economics and entrepreneurship, then then we start to have a movement, right? And then we have other sources for training and education and sending out people. It becomes almost an apostolic operation at this level, You know, um, there's certainly some prophetic involved, but it becomes very much an apostolic uh, movement because we're training, equipping, and sending out um, into the business marketplace, into uh, the investing world. So that's super powerful. Um, Man, this is good. I just keep going. 
Uh, number three, point, point number three that I want to cover here is, and this really is what I think, um, this is the cherry on top, and um, it is the Holy Spirit's power at work in business and finance. Now, that sounds like a spiritual point that you might hear on a sermon on Sunday, but what I really want to encourage people is, the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit is truly what we need in the sphere of influence where we are operating in business and investing. This is the final piece, folks. Um, so stay with me. This is my last point. But honestly, if you heard nothing else I said, um, point number three, it, it, is, it, it is the top. Um, you know, there's a couple of quotes when I was doing some research on this. And again, we're talking about becoming a kingdom investor. How do we get awakened and empowered to manage with kingdom perspective our businesses and our financial dollars um, on that? You know, the great, the great Billy Graham said that the Holy Spirit sees everything that goes on. He knows what's going on in our hearts, and he knows what's going on in our minds. Nothing is hidden from him. And so... There is no sacred or secular. In fact, the lordship of Jesus should be even more prevalent in my business than anywhere. Um, because if you're spending 30, 40, 50, 60 hours a week in your business, then uh, Jesus needs to have lordship over that. Now, one of the things we see um, in the business marketplace, and I would imagine most of you would agree with me, is that there is not often the operation of the Holy Spirit in the marketplace or in the, the realm of, of personal finance. You know, uh, A.W. Tozer, who I've quoted, he was a pastor and author from the, from the 1950s, and um, he had this great quote. He had several, but um, he said that, you know, if the Holy Spirit was withdrawn from the church— Right, if the Holy Spirit was withdrawn completely from the church, 95% of what we do and what goes on would continue and no one would know the difference. Right, and so, however, in the New Testament church, you get to the book of Acts, um, if the Holy Spirit was withdrawn, then 95% of what Paul and the boys. And the ladies were doing, Peter, of what they were doing would stop, and everyone would know the difference. So this begs the question, uh, if that's true in the church, how much more true is that in our businesses and in personal finance? Um, I think a lot of times, uh, even as we're mindful Christians in what we're doing, we're thoughtful in serving uh, we are doing things from a right heart, but we're not actually partnering with what the Holy Spirit wants to do or when he wants to do something, having conversational intimacy with the Holy Spirit to say, you know, do you have a word for this person? Or what number should I pay for this? Or what person should I hire? Like he would actually tell us that. And um, that, that's been really challenging for me, uh, just just as a, a business owner and investor of, of, well, I really need this genius, the Holy Spirit. Um, I mean, he is, right? John 16, he is our teacher and our guide. And so anything that, that I'm doing or my team does to help people in the area of personal finance and coaching should only point them to the Holy Spirit. And so I, I need to be a good tour guide to hand them off to the one who can give them all the right answers and all the right timing for managing resources. So that's an exciting opportunity. You know, I mean, honestly, I think if we can invite the Holy Spirit in more to partner with us in our investing and in managing our businesses, we would see powerful things happen. You know, there's more, more to speak on this third point, and um, I'll probably just have to do an episode and bring some people on to talk about how they see this happening in the marketplace. But um, so a lot of people 
may reach out and say, well, how do I practically do this? Like, I, I know I have the Holy Spirit in me. I, I, you know, I pray. I have mentors. Um, I really want to encourage you to activate the spiritual gifts in your personal finance, in your business, whether you're a business owner or, or an employee, like, like actively engage. And, um, I do just want to release that over, over listeners that, that the Holy Spirit will just activate your spiritual gifts. You know, there, there's three different passages in scripture where it talks very specifically about examples of spiritual gifts. You know, right. We have the you know, gifts of the Father in Romans 12. We have the gifts of the Son in Ephesians 4, and then gifts of the Holy Spirit in, in 1 Corinthians 12. Now, I don't have time on the day show to unpack all those. I'll probably have to do a separate episode and, and just really dig into that. But here's what I'm seeing, and, here, and here's what I want to do um, more of, is there are people, men and women, around the, around the world, that are ascending up the gates of influence in, in the spheres of culture, business, government, education, the arts, media, and, and they're using it, uh, excuse me, they're moving up into the gates of influence by the unction of the Holy Spirit. And how are they doing it? It's through the spiritual gifts. Um, so spiritual gifts can have different occupations. So if you think about a spiritual gift of prophecy or leadership or exhortation, or how about a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge for a client or situation, or the gift of discerning of spirits when you're in an uh, unknown territory or working with companies and people that you've not met before, it's actually these spiritual gifts when they're activated and working in the marketplace, in personal finance, where a breakthrough is happening. You know, there are people, men and women, who are having meetings with world leaders, and, and they're being invited into rooms for meetings where they have no idea how they're getting there, but they're being asked by the kings and queens of today for prophetic counsel, for wisdom, and, and really are able to become the mouthpiece of God. And so that that's happening. And I really want to encourage us, uh, just as I, I wrap up here, on, on this concept of empowering and awakening our gifts and the call to be kingdom investors in business and investing, that um, spiritual gifts are not solely limited to, to the use uh, in the church. They, they certainly are for evangelism and for healing, but a word of knowledge for a physical healing is one occupation, but a word of knowledge for a business situation or a financial choice is another occupation, and, and it doesn't make one lesser than the other, and, and I've seen this firsthand. I mean, I, I want to personally dig into this more uh, I, I've experienced it some. I've been around people who have as well. But, uh, you know, the gift of faith, um, prophecy, these words of wisdom and knowledge, these are just as powerful in the marketplace as a business owner, as an entrepreneur with ideas and creativity, and in the realm of choosing what to invest in. Um, I mean, God desires to reveal these things to us. So I think this is a vastly untapped world um, where if we really will invite the Holy Spirit in to our businesses and to our personal financial choices with investing and, and just get activated in, in the spiritual gifts and really pause and take a little more time to, to talk with Jesus about these type of opportunities when should you hire the next person? How should you expand your market? What types of investments should be looking at? What's coming next for the economy? Um, you know, uh, this is powerful. And, and I really believe this really summarizes this concept that I wrote on about awakening and empowering. This is not just, well, let's work harder and let's create more systems which amount to religion it's really 
we need to just clear our heads and our hearts and, and invite the Holy Spirit to come into investment decisions, into the stewardship decisions, um, because He wants to co-labor with us, right? He wants to, we want to be a partnership um, with that. So, uh, again, that's the third point. Really, that, that really summarizes it. Again, I talked about the filters uh, at the beginning, biblically responsible, pro-values, and kingdom impact. And I talked a little bit about these relational communities. So I want to encourage you to be a part of one, start one, um, get connected with a relational community, um, and especially one that, that's looking at how to make an impact in, in business and investing. Uh, all right, This is, I think, something that can be an extension of your local church, um, but it may be just be people you, you find in, in the marketplace, you know, through LinkedIn. Um, and I, and I also talked about educational curriculum and, and really this educational, uh, empowerment, uh, that's happening. So, uh, and then the third point I finished there really inviting the Holy Spirit to come and partner with us through spiritual gifts, uh, as outlined in, in the different passages in scripture, um, that the gifts, right, of, of uh, leadership, exhortation, prophecy, discerning of spirits, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, gift of faith. So if those are actually planted and uh, take root and bear fruit in your business and in your finance. Um, so I want to end with that. Again, this was a, a really fun for me to 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 share with you all. It's something I've been doing some research on and teaching on. And, and I want to just end, um, you know, with this, um, you know, uh, A.W. Tozer, who I love to quote, you know, he said, you know, what comes into our mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us. And I want to leave you with that, that when you think about your business, your career, uh, how you're spending your time, and, and how you're managing your resources. We talk a lot about, well, let's not invest in woke companies or let's avoid Google or, you know, we do kind of pick on some of these companies and rightfully so, but that's not what's most important. What's most important is what comes into my mind when I, when I think about God and in the context of business and finance and investing, that is the most important thing on that. So, uh, I want to just, uh, release on you for those, for those of you, uh, that are in the marketplace that are in currently, uh, investing in financial planning actively. I just want to impart, uh, as we wrap up just a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him and that the spiritual gifts would flow, would flow through you, that the power of the spirit would rest on you. And I just want to activate that in Jesus' name, that um, as you go, um, that you just your, your heart starts to burn like the two on the Emmaus Road for revelation and spiritual breakthrough in your businesses and finances. Well, hey, thanks for joining us today on the Kingdom Finance Show. I hope you have enjoyed Awaken and Empower, and uh, I'm just really believing and declaring good things for you and your businesses, your careers, and in your personal uh, financial decisions and investing. Uh, if you want to connect with us, you can find us at wealthbuilders.net and we will see you next time. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Kingdom Finance Show. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review. It really helps to get the word out. For more resources on becoming a kingdom investor and to connect with us directly, visit our website at wealthbuilders.net. That's wealthbuilders.net. We'll see you next time on the Kingdom Finance Show.